in 2007, there were 600,000 knee replacements in the United States alone. That's, that's a lot. Uh, less than 50,000 partial knee procedures in the United States in the same year. So you can see that partial knee replacements are done much less commonly. And that one of the reasons for that is that the partial knee replacement outcomes have not been quite as good as the uh, total knee arthroplasty. And it's principally been, I think, because of the mechanical instrumentation that we use. Uh, in the past, we've, we've uh, aligned things by using rods up the femur bone, rods down the tibia, and, and studies have shown that your alignment uh, has everything to do with the longevity of your hemiarthroplasty and the, and the long-term survivability. And so that's why I think some of these, um, we, with mechanical instruments, it's difficult to line things up just exactly perfect. And that's where macoplasty comes in. This is a, a new way of lining things up. It is literally a computerized uh, robotic arm. And you can see it right over here. This is the, the robotic arm part called the Rio. And this is what we use to now address this middle portion, this partial knee replacement. And it can be a hemiarthroplasty on the medial side. It's right over here. Or, or a bicondylar, a hemi and a uh, patellofemoral replacement. And that's really what we're concentrating on today. And that's what you see right here. On the left, you see the medial arthroplasty. And then right next to that, the patellofemoral arthroplasty. It's just a resurfacing arthroplasty of both the, the femur, the femoral intercondylar notch, and the patella, the kneecap, where that, where that kneecap rides in that groove. Or you can actually do them both at the same time. Okay? And so that's a bicondylar. And this is what on a... Uh, on, on acrylic bones, this is what they look like. That's the, uh, this is the partial knee replacement. This is uh, the metal piece on top on the femur bone. That's a little metal piece on the tibia bone. And there's a little plastic piece right in the middle. It functions as a bushing, essentially, between the uh, uh, two metal pieces. And that's what that looks like on an x-ray. So when you come into the office, that's kind of what you look like if you've had a bicondylar uh, knee replacement. So the, the benefits of the MAKO are that we can actually do this through a smaller incision now because of this robotic arm. Literally, there's a burr on the end of this robotic arm. And so there's not big bulky instrumentation that we have to put into the knee, so it can be done through a smaller incision. And hopefully that will uh, preserve some bone and soft tissue so that the patients recover faster. That's the whole idea behind this. And, and what we're looking at is, is hopefully improved surgical outcomes with hemiarthroplasty. Uh, with less implant wear and loosening over time. And that's really what we're looking for is, is, is the better alignment causing these implants to wear much longer. It is bone sparing. We use less bone than with a, a knee replacement. Again, smaller incision, which leads to less scarring and reduced blood loss, and hopefully uh, minimal hospitalization. In fact, some places uh, actually do this as an outpatient procedure. It can be done as an outpatient procedure. We're not doing that right now here. <coughs> And that is what the macoplasty looks like. Uh, essentially, this is a computer navigation. And so um, you see this, uh, this part right here has these things that look like eyes. And those look down on the knee when we have these little tracker balls. And, and that uh, tells the computer exactly where the knee is in, in space and time. And so what we, uh, what we do at first, it takes a pre-op CT scan. So when a patient comes in for a macoplasty, we get a, we get a CT scan of the knee. And once we uh, have that CT scan, we actually plan the surgery before the patient ever gets into the room. We put the parts on the, on the virtual bones, as you can see right here. And we can move those parts any which way we want to, to make it absolutely perfect. And then uh, once we get inside the knee, we can kind of tweak those parts just a little bit. But we can set our gaps, uh, both in flexion and extension. I know you don't understand what that means, but we can set the parts exactly where we want so that the pressures on the plastic are as low as we can make it. When the pressures on the plastic are as low as we can make it, that translates into longer life for the implant. And so we essentially do the operation on the computer before we do the operation on the patient. So by the time we get in there and, and start um, working on the bone itself, which is that second slide, we essentially have a burr, which is on the end of this robotic arm. And we just burr anything that looks green on the x-ray. 
So we transfer the CT image of your knee to actually your real knee on the operating table and from that the computer tells us exactly what part of the bone needs to be removed. It's extremely, extremely accurate. So you can see the burr right here. That's the burr coming in and this is the part of the bone that is to be removed to accept the implant. Very, very precise. And this is the robotic arm you see here on the right. And the really neat thing about the robotic arm is it once you get to that point, it's almost foolproof. It, it, it's like coloring, but it won't let you get out of the lines. If you try to get out of the lines, it won't even let you. It stops you and then it beeps at you. It gets mad at you. So, so it really is, is, is quite simple once you get to that point. And so that's what the, the back of the femur, actually the femur is upside down and in back. And that's on the posterior condyle of the femur. You see that blue bird coming in. All the green stuff is to be removed, and once it looks white, then it's, it's been removed. And that's on the tibia. This is the lower bone looking straight down on the tibia. And that again is the, the green bone to be removed. And that is what it looks like intraoperatively. That is a, a knee that is being burred at this time. Those little black things with the silver holes in the middle, those are the tracker balls that I talked about earlier. And that is what tells the computer exactly where the femoral head is and exactly where the landmarks on the knee are at, at all times. And so that's what guides that robotic arm. And this is the little tracker on the robot itself. And so that all gets married together through the computer. So who is a good candidate for a makoplasty? Um, it, it's, Basically, we're looking for people with isolated medial compartment disease or isolated patellofemoral, or actually both, like, like we talked about. Uh, you have to, I mean, the, the, the indications are exactly the same as they have been for, for hemiarthroplasty. We like patients to be around 200 pounds or less, uh, intact anterior cruciate ligament. That's the ligament that the football players all lose. You really need to have an intact anterior cruciate ligament. But you have to have enough pain that you start having startup pain with stiffness, uh, failing conservative therapy, um, having failed weight loss, and that kind of thing. Okay, the life expectancy of a makoplasty. That's something we can't exactly uh, uh, predict. Uh, we can, what we can predict is that the life expectancy of a hemiarthroplasty, which is what we're doing, is better the better we align the, the extremity and the better we place the parts. And that's what makes this machine much better than the mechanical instruments that we've had before.